Hello and welcome, this is Eagle Eye 621 and what you see behind me are two very basic but very efficient coarse fruit and coarse flower plants as Java 1.17 is getting underway. It's important not to forget about some of the basics and the coarse fruit does have some uses. Some of your best hidden entrances are eating coarse fruit because it is no entrance, it lets you teleport. It also helps you out if you get stuck in some of your redstone without wanting to destroy anything. And if you like making end rods, then this is part of what you will need along with the blaze rods. And I'll throw a link down below. Of course, do be sure to subscribe if you're watching this to make sure you don't miss any of the Java 1.17 farms or the other more complicated stuff I do. But let's get started, and as basic and simple as this is, it is highly dependent on the spacing. So now let's take a look at what we need first for our coarse fruit. This also does give you the flower farm, and it's in this chest, and it's highly scalable. So you're going to want some dispensers and water buckets. This is per row, along with a dot of redstone. And then you're also going to need some endstone to go with your coarse flowers and a button. Now as part of our harvesting, I recommend this multi-shot perfect crossbow. I'll have a link in the eye cards in the description to this as well, with some arrows that you'll need, and also a perfect axe. It doesn't need to have silk touch in order to mine the fruit, but this is what I like anyways. Let's get this into the inventory and get started real quick. And all you're gonna do is just keep on digging down, but again, this is going to come down to a spacing issue. So let's give ourselves a smaller size farm, and you're going to want to have a dispenser all the way in the back for all of these. Your redstone is going to go directly behind these, and your button is going to be somewhere where the redstone will reach to all of them. And then in each one of these dispensers, you're going to need your water bucket. Now I'll have a link to my super simple starter farms, and that will show you a trick you can use to save some resources if you don't want to use dispensers for this and instead you would like to use trap doors. And then we're going to dig out forward and it's not this straightforward as, as far as the water will go because there is going to be some extra spacing involved. So let's clear all these out. And for these, you are going to want to have three in from the sides and I like to start two away from there. So you can see this would be one, two, and three in. So here is what we're placing. And then you want to have this three apart from each other. So one, two, three, and then place here. And that means that of course, we need to go a little bit bigger on this side because we are going to want to be three away on this as well. Just like that. And let's expand our dispensers with our water buckets and let's place one in there in here and in here and of course we need to expand our redstone and this is well within the 15 so we don't need to centralize that and then we dig out and you want to dig out further than you're going to need and you'll see how this comes up in a second and as I said, you want to have now three away in a grid from your last ones. So we're going to go out one, two, three, and then place. And then we can make a box like this. And we want to turn our water on because we want to see exactly where it is flowing to. And this is perfect. We can cut in right here and keep going. And the reason that you're not just making it as far as the water goes continually is because you need to make sure that you don't end up on a rim with what you're placing. And I will show you what that means as we continue. And it's a lot of digging, but you don't need a lot of blocks. So this is all very nice and easy. And then again, just keep going. And lots and lots of digging. It's actually probably be faster in survival with some insta mining perfect tools, but let's just persist. And now we want to keep this. So one, two, three, and then place. And then we know we're coming over here. 
one, two, three, and then place, and also back on this side. And again, we want to check our water because if it turns out that we're going too far, then we just pull it back in one. And you can see that right here, the water is going to be just like this. If the water ended right here, so if this water was back one, and you would have to dig down one block to place this, then this wouldn't work anymore because you can't place a chlorous flower next to the sand. So this is perfectly fine. And then whenever you are done at the end, let's get some of the sand back. Then you just dig a hole going in this direction and you put your bucket of water in the, I have water in my inventory already. You put the water going this way and you don't even really need to use a hopper and a chest because this is going to be a manual farm which you're going to need to replant as soon as you're done. And then you dig down one like this and the water will push all the way to where you want. And right in here, you have a little area you can jump in and get the stuff and then jump back out. And then the way that the farm works is very straightforward. Once you have everything placed, you just put your coarse fruit or your coarse flowers and they'll start to grow. And with the power of some creative mode cheating, we can set our random tick speed 100 times faster than it's supposed to be. And once the flowers are done growing, you can tell they change from that white color to this just straight purple. And they'll grow for a while. In order to harvest them, you want to make sure that you collect at least as many flowers as you have places to plant. So I'm going to go into survival mode for this. And I can assure you that my XP is completely unrelated to murdering wandering traders. And you can actually, in the more recent versions, just shoot them if you had better aim. And the reason that I like the multi-shot is because targeting one, you can get lucky and hit more than one or you can try for some skill shots to hit three at the same time. And you just wander around. You don't have to climb. You don't have to worry about falling off and being damaged, although it's not really that big of a deal. And you keep shooting the ones that you can't reach. If they are in reach, then you can come along and give them a whack with the ax. And this ax will harvest those flowers. And then, you just come back and you click the button. The button will wash everything all the way to the end. And you'll see that most of the drops go in here. There is some that's gonna land on the outside, even with that three margin, but you can see that a lot more land when you don't give it that extra space, which is what I did here, not digging out further. And then you just come around to this, collect everything, come back, turn the water back off and then to not have any issues you come back you plant them you have this somewhere in your base and very easy as soon as it's done growing you then come back and harvest it all over again now this will give you more than enough of the flowers to keep planting and also a lot of fruit but if you really don't want the fruit and you're looking for just a flower farm, then this is the kind of structure that you're going to want. And again, this is very spatially dependent, makes it a lot easier. And these are the materials you're going to need per. So let's get rid of what I have here and get these into the inventory. And these don't have to be glass, doesn't have to be stone. You just do need one end stone and one chlorous flower per. Let's find a nice little flat area where we can do this. And this will be fine right here. And you're going to start by placing your end stone down. You're gonna go up three, just like this, and then surround with glass or any block you want. It can even be glass panes. Dig back down in and plant your chorus flower. And this will pop up and generally speaking, will give you two to three. It can give you one. It will never give you less than one. 
and it can give you four, although that's very rare. And then in order to expand this, you're actually looking to complete this grid so that this all looks like a checkerboard and that each of these are far enough away from each other that they have their own space, just like this. And then you can continue going on again. And we want to have enough so that we have this checkerboard maintaining itself to be as compact as possible. And then dig in and put our end stone and our chorus flower. And the pattern that you have can be this sort of more symmetrical look, which you see will work, or you can have it a little offset as I did on the other side, which you can see is a little bit nicer in my opinion, just in terms of the aesthetics and a little more compact. And I'll show you that in one second. And if I crank the speed back up to very fast, you can see that we do have one that ended up in one, the twos and the threes are a lot more common, which is what you see over here in this pattern. And this pattern is offset. If I can come in here, you can see it's a one, two, three and over offset. One, two, three and over. But again, what you just want is you want to maintain this checkerboard to make it as condensed as possible. And because everything is right here on the ground level, you just come through with your ax and you chop up all of the flowers as you walk through. And because this is a specifically flower farm, you do want to make sure you get all of them. You do have the benefit in this that the flowers don't appreciate that they're not growing anymore, which is why they maintain this majority white color. And once you've gone all the way around, you come back through and you can get rid of this. You can set up a water system, but again, since you're here, it's not really worth it. You can make sure you have all of these drops and then you place down your flowers back onto your designated areas and you will see that they will grow just like this. And if we go back up, you can see that again, the majority of them are in the twos and threes and there are a couple of ones here on the outside. And that's really all there is to it. Very simple, very straightforward, a super simple farm with a useful output that you don't need a lot of, but you can get a lot of it fast and then not worry about it anymore. If you found this video helpful, I would appreciate that like. If you found it interesting, maybe even tell one of your friends or your favorite Minecraft YouTubers to see if they'll build this in their world. And for more videos like this, do be sure to subscribe. Before I sign off, let me just make one more note about this three in between spacing. I did a whole bunch of testing to see what the most efficient is and if you get any smaller than the three there is a dramatic reduction of the flowers if you go further than three you do get a slight increase in the flowers but the farms become really big and unwieldy just in terms of how much size and space you want to commit to it so the three in between is the perfect size and I was doing a little research and it turns out that Exumavoid did a video about this a number of years back and came to the same conclusion. So I'll put his video in the description as well. Thanks for stopping by.